Hello everyone, welcome again. Well, in our previous video, we discussed about how to configure Log4Net framework. And also we created a helper class that will return us the instance for logger. Well, in this video, we are going to discuss about the importance of log file for debugging the failed test case, especially when you are running your test case in a headless browser. For example, PhantomJS. Because as we know that, in case of headless browser, everything will be happen in the memory. You will not be able to see anything on the UI. So in such cases, the importance of log file plays a very vital role. So using the framework class that is log for net helper, I have added the logger statement in all the framework method. Okay. For example, for checkbox helper, I have added in checked checkbox is checkbox checked. Similarly for the button helper, I have, I have added the required logger statement and so on. Okay. And this is required. So once you have a proper logger statement in the framework method, it is very easy to generate the logs and also backtrack the actions what the browser is doing. So I'm going to group my test case by triads. And again, I will take the example of smoke test. Okay. So I'm going to run this test and I'm going to run this four test cases inside the phantom JS. Okay. So, you will not be able to see any interaction in the UI. So just do a right click, run the selected test. So it has launched the Phantom JS driver. And if I go to my output folder, so as you can see here, there is a log file. I will open it. So as you can see here, every action which is happening at the headless browser being logged here. First, it created the Phantom JS service, then it uses the Phantom JS driver. And also you can see here from which class and from which method and what is the information. Okay. So after creating the Phantom JS driver, it maximize the browser, navigate to this page, then data checking of element, then click on link and so on. Okay. So again, the log file got really loaded. So as you can see here, so whatever the action, which is script is doing inside the headless browser browser for every action, there is an entry inside the log file. Okay. So as you can see here at the end, stopping the driver. Okay. So out of four, three got passed and one got failed. But this information is not present inside the log file. The reason why the information is not there is because our test case got failed, but we didn't capture that failure message. So here in order to do that, I will use the logger object again. So private read only static i log logger equal to log for net helper dot get logger get xml logger type of this class and the reason why i made it as read only static is because once this instance is initialized i don't want that it should be changed. That's why I made it read, read only. Now I will put a try catch over here and move this entire code inside the block. Catch the exception and log the exception. So logger dot error. So as we know that the exception is a very critical information. That's why I'm using the error as a level. While in other case, I will use either information, debug or one. So I'm going to log exception dot stack trace. After that, I will take the screenshot. Okay. So from now onwards, whatever the test case you are going to write, 
first create the instance of logger in that class put your test script inside the try catch block and handle in this manner so let us suppose your test script got failed with an exception this catch block will handle that that exception log the information inside the log file take the screenshot of the failed test case and rethrow the exception so still the test case will fail but before that we will log the important information and the take the screenshot also okay so i am going to rerun this smoke test again So now again I will open the log file. So as you can see here again there are entry for every action which the browser is doing. Okay. I will reload it. So as you can see here there is a failure. Based on the error we can understand that. And it has also print out the stack trace. From here you can see that the failure is happening in the class test hyperlink.cs at line 31. And also it has taken the screenshot. So this is the name for the screenshot. Now this information is getting captured because of this try catch block. And as you can see here the result is same. Out of four, three got passed and one got failed. But this time we lock the required information inside the log file. So if I open the log file again, so in the end it is stopping the driver. So I can look at here that there is an error which is at click link method and it is coming from test hyperlink. Okay. CS line at 31. And uh, I will check for the screenshot. Yeah, this is the screenshot. So in this manner, as you can see here, the log file plays a very important role when you are running your test case inside the headless browser. As well, uh, headless browser where you can't see any action on the UI. The log file also be important when you are running your test case in the normal browser also, but in the headless browser it plays more important role okay and as you can see here with the help of log file and the screenshot you can debug the failed test case so that's all for this video and thanks for watching